What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm comparing two Adidas runners, the Ultra Boost versus the Solar Boost. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't yet and want to see more videos just like this one. Also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler. But with all that out of the way, let's get into it. I just recently did a review of the brand new Adidas Solar Boost and overall I think it's a really great shoe. However, if you guys know me at all, you know that I love the Adidas Ultra Boost and I was really interested to see which shoe I liked better overall. Both shoes are obviously runners from Adidas, but I'd argue that the Solar Boost is a bit more performance driven than the Ultra Boost. However, the Ultra Boost is designed to be a performance sneaker as well. There are a lot of different reasons I say that, but most of them have to do with the materials used on each shoe. So why don't we stop wasting time and jump into the comparison. Starting things off, one of the biggest differences between these two shoes is the price. The Solar Boost comes in at a mid-range price of 160 bucks, whereas the Ultra Boost comes in at a more premium price of 180. <clears throat> to be fair, the Ultra Boost that I'm holding did retail for 220, but most Ultra Boosts do retail for 180. So right off the bat, if you're more budget conscious, the Solar Boost may be the way to go. But as with many performance sneakers, the reason the pricing is different is because of the materials, so why don't we jump into those next. Starting things off with the upper of the Solar Boost, you've got this stretch mesh on the toe, and then you've got this tailored fiber placement on the midfoot. Both of these materials and their placement are great for containment of the foot. However, because neither of them have any ventilation holes to speak of, they do run hot. The stretch mesh or neoprene-like material on the toe does have some stretch to it, but it's not anything too drastic. You can wiggle your toes and they don't feel cramped, but it's not the stretchiest material. And then on the midfoot of the shoe, the tailored fiber placement is very stiff, which again is great for containment. However, I didn't find it to be the most comfortable thing in the world. Moving over to the Ultra Boost, as we've come to expect, the entire upper is made up of Prime Knit. Prime Knit is great because because it's very stretchy and very breathable. However, at times I did find it a little bit unstable and I found that my foot was shifting in the upper of the shoe a little bit. That's remedied somewhat by the midfoot cage. However, I did find that it didn't contain my foot as well as the Solar Boost. Continuing back on both sneakers, each one approaches tongue construction differently. The Solar Boost has a well padded, semi detached, neoprene feeling tongue. The tongue does connect to the stretch mesh upper about midway down, but because it's a relatively separate tongue, you do get a little bit more containment when you tighten up the shoe. Whereas with the Ultra Boost, the upper is a one piece booty construction meaning the tongue isn't separate. So when you tighten up the laces, you do get a more snug fit around the midfoot. However, it isn't as customizable and doesn't get as tight as the Solar Boost. The tongue on the Ultra Boost, however, is a little bit more padded and I did find it to be a little bit more comfortable. As for sizing, fit on both shoes was relatively similar. I went through to size on both of these sneakers and I found that the Solar Boost does fit tighter, which for performance use cases like running, I definitely prefer. The Ultra Boost did fit comfortably and well, especially for lifestyle wear. However, I found that it wasn't as tight as I would like it when I'm running. You should be fine going True to size either way, however, I definitely suggest trying on both shoes first before you buy them to make sure the fit is right for you. Continuing around to the heel, both shoes have a TPU heel counter. Lockdown in the heel counter feels great and I had no complaints on either sneaker. One thing to keep in mind is that the ankle area on the Ultra Boost, again, is not adjustable and is pretty wide. I honestly wear this shoe as more of a slip-on than a sneaker that I lace up every time I wear it. Whereas with the Solar Boost, I usually have to unlace it and then relace it whenever I put my foot into the shoe. Not a big deal either way, but that definitely goes back to the point that I was making at the beginning of the video about how I think the Solar Boost is more of a performance sneaker and the Ultra Boost is more of a lifestyle sneaker. Moving down on the Solar Boost, we get to another big difference between the Solar Boost and the Ultra Boost, this EVA side panel. Unlike the Ultra Boost, the Solar Boost has these EVA rails that run down each side of the sneaker. These rails don't actually go all the way underneath your foot. In fact, your foot is still resting on the boost like the Ultra Boost. However, they do add some lateral stability so your foot's not shifting around when you're running. They also actually wrap up around the side of your foot between the midfoot and the heel to give you a little bit more containment. The most noticeable thing about about these EVA side rails is that they do actually seem to firm up the boost a little bit. So if you don't like that sort of overly soft, almost mushy at time ride when you're running in the Ultra Boost, this is definitely the way to go. So rounding off the uppers of each shoe, if you're looking for a more contained, more performance driven upper, the Solar Boost is the way to go. Yes, it runs hot and yes, the materials aren't as comfortable as the Ultra Boost, but I think the trade-offs you're making are definitely worth it if you're looking for a performance running sneaker that features boost. The Ultra Boost on the other hand definitely has more premium materials. I would say they're a lot more comfortable, they're a lot more well ventilated. You're not going to get as nice of a fit in the Ultra Boost, but if you like a more comfortable, sort of looser lifestyle ride, this is the way to go. Moving down the sneaker, we get to everyone's favorite styrofoam doppelganger, the Boost Midsole. 
Obviously, because both shoes feature boost, they both have a very comfortable ride and a lot of impact protection. However, I think primarily due to this EVA rail, the Solar Boost has a much firmer ride than the Ultra Boost. You also feel a little bit higher off the ground with the Ultra Boost, which makes me think that there's a little bit more boost in the midsole than in the Solar Boost. I'm sure most of you watching have felt the Ultra Boost and felt how great it feels on foot. It has an extremely soft, sort of bouncy, comfortable ride. One performance complaint that some people have when it comes to the Ultra Boost is that sometimes it can feel mushy. And something that you'll notice that Adidas does differently in their basketball line versus the Ultra Boost is that most of their boost midsoles are contained in some way. And that's to stop the boost from expanding as much as it does in the Ultra Boost. If you allow the boost to expand too much and it can sort of expand in any direction, that leads to it feeling a little bit unstable. And especially in basketball when you're making a lot of lateral movements and cuts, stability is very important. Usually in running though, you're mainly just going forward so it's not as big of a deal, but I have heard some runners complain about how unstable the Ultra Boost can be. As I mentioned, the Solar Boost does seem to be a firmer ride. There doesn't seem to be any boost in the toe of the sneaker so you get a little bit more ground feel in that area. And then again, I think this EVA rail does help to firm up the boost a little bit. So the boost from like the forefoot to the midfoot is relatively stiff. However, when you get to the heel of the sneaker, it actually seems to have a little bit more boost than the Ultra Boost has. So when it comes to heel cushion, the Solar Boost has you covered. Another thing I noticed about the Solar Boost versus the Ultra Boost when it came to the midsole is that the Solar Boost seemed to be a little bit more springy and a little bit more bouncy than the Ultra Boost did. And again, I think it's because the boost is a little bit firmer and you don't feel like you're sinking into the shoe, but rather sort of bouncing off the boost. So as for the cushion, if you're looking for a firmer, more bouncy ride, the Solar Boost is definitely the way to go. However, if you're looking for that super soft, more plush ride, the Ultra Boost has you covered. Finally, moving to the soles of the sneakers, each shoe has a stretch web continental outsole. Traction seems to be relatively similar on each shoe. You shouldn't have any problems there. The only real difference between the bottom of each shoe is the torsion system. The torsion system is this little plastic piece you see in the bottom midfoot of all your Ultra Boost sneakers. On the Ultra Boost, you've got these two plastic arms that extend out on the midfoot of each shoe underneath the outsole. And that just serves as a little plastic brace in the midfoot to keep the shoe from twisting like this. That sort of twisting is not something you want, especially when you're running or even walking for that matter. So moving over to the Solar Boost, unlike the Ultra Boost that only has two little arms on the medial side of the sneaker, the Solar Boost actually has three arms that extend out a lot farther on the base of the sneaker. This extra arm and the fact that they extended all the arms provide a lot more torsional support. Wrapping things up, the Ultra Boost and the Solar Boost are both excellent sneakers. Based on the extra materials and the performance modifications, if you're looking for a running sneaker, I would definitely suggest the Solar Boost. Yes, it's a little bit warmer, and yes, it's not as comfortable as the Ultra Boost, but overall, it's an excellent performance sneaker. The Ultra Boost, on the other hand, is one of the best lifestyle sneakers you can buy. It's $20 more expensive, but for that, you get more premium materials, it's more comfortable on foot, and in my opinion, I think it looks better. That pretty much wraps it up for the video today. I'd love to know your thoughts on the Ultra Boost versus the Solar Boost, and which one you like better, so leave those comments in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.